All right, so one of the things that I really like uh, Dynamesh for is its ability to generate booleans by combining subtools. So let me just go ahead and show you what I'm talking about. There's a brush here called IMM Primitives. IMM stands for Insert Multi Mesh, and it's very, very useful. Uh, so I'm going to come over here and we'll just grab whatever, like uh, this polysphere here. And I'm going to click and drag, and it'll basically just get drawn directly on the surface, and you can see it's pointing down onto the surface. So I've intersected it. I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, split it. So the easiest way to do that is you can, it's a little hard to tell with this uh, particular material. So this is masked and this is unmasked. You can see it's a little bit darker and the, the surface that you add geo to is automatically going to be masked when you add it, uh, when you add something using insert multi mesh. So, it's very easy when you've got your masking set up like this to split it. So I'm just going to go to split and we'll do a split unmasked points. So that leaves our original geometry alone. And now I have these spheres that I use the uh, insert multi mesh to append and they are sitting on their own subtool. So I can very easily give them a few subdivisions. We'll just hit control D a few times. So I've actually added the geometry. I'm not using the uh, dynamic sub D here. And if I want to punch these out, there's some Boolean operations here. So this one right there, and that might be a little hard to see, that is going to be our subtract. So the way it works is the one you want to keep is on top, and the one that you want to perform the Boolean with is below it. And then you just have to set whatever you want. So this is going to be intersection. So this would just basically get like the place where these two surfaces intersect. And this is going to use this to punch out of this. So the only thing that has to be a Dynamesh is your top subtool. The bottom subtool does not need to be Dynamesh. How can you tell if it's Dynamesh? If you go down here and this is, is highlighted, that means that this is an active Dynamesh surface. You can totally turn it off and now it is just a regular piece of geometry, which means I can mask off and nothing's going to happen. But as soon as it's Dynamesh, nothing is changing here, but it's, it's, uh, it's, it's recalculating that, that uh, Dynamesh. All right, so now that this is a Dynamesh, and this is set to one of these Boolean operations. In this case, it's negative. What I can do is I can just merge down. So that's right here, and we'll do a merge down. We'll hit OK. And uh, if I recalculate the Dynamesh now, it's going to punch that stuff right on out, which is pretty cool. Getting the order of this stuff is, is challenging. So you can, I mean, it doesn't seem that challenging in this context, but it, people struggle with it. So one of the things that you can do if you're running into problems is you can hit Shift F. And if I go to one of these neutral colors here, ooh, I think that was probably the wrong material to grab. Let me try basic material. If you turn on your uh, polyframe, which you can also do right up here, uh, well, the hotkey for that is Shift F, what you, you can see is whatever the Boolean negative is going to be is going to be this white uh, polygroup. The only time you'll ever see a white uh, polygroup is if it's a negative Boolean operation. So I'm just going to hit Control W, which will, well, let me do a different one. Let me hit Auto Groups here. So Auto Groups puts each unconnected mesh into its own polygroup. So this makes it very easy to, um, you know, hide or isolate or whatever. So if you just combined your subtools without setting up your your Boolean option beforehand, you can you can do it after the fact. So uh, I'm just going to come over here and we'll isolate these guys. And then if you go down to your polygroups. Uh, panel. You can set this to group as Dynamesh sub and it'll turn them white. So if you're having problems with the Dynamesh, uh, just go ahead and grab one of the neutral materials. Basic material here is totally fine and confirm that they are white. And if they're not white, then come on down to your, you want to isolate them and then come on down to uh, the group as Dynamesh sub option and it'll go ahead and do that work for you. So you may notice here that we've got a new polygroup on the inside, which is which is going to be convenient. There's uh, all kinds of things you can do that are really cool uh, when you've got a border like this uh, between two polygroups, and I will be uh, showing that to you uh, very very shortly. But so this this uh, this is a very simple uh, example, obviously, of just taking a, a couple of subtools and combining them and punching stuff out. But you can do some more interesting things. So for instance, if rather than using a primitive, let me see if I've got uh, something cool here, right? Like a bolt brush. So this is something I put together a little while ago. 
and I'll, I'll have a tutorial on how to do this as well. Um, I'm going to use this shape here. I'm going to punch it in and it's going to look all cool. But what you can also maybe notice is that this boundary here between the two subtools that we dynameshed is nasty looking, right? That's really bad. So what we can do if this is happening is you just let's just back up a little bit again, and I'm just going to go to, let's see. What I want to do is I want to increase my, <clears throat> my Dynamesh resolution. So they are currently on one subtool and Dynamesh all set up. So I can just come over here and I'll just bump this up to like 512. And now when we recalculate, it should be lovely, right? So that's, that's uh, the, the solution for, for taking care of that. And now that that's the case, I'm going to come over with my negative triangle shape here and we'll just draw it in. And if I pull it a little bit above the surface, what you can see is that's what it looks like, right? So it's, these are uh, different pieces and they're all kind of put together so that I can move them as a unit. And then once I get everything where I want it to be, I can, I can split it out. So again, I used insert mesh brush. So this is going to automatically mask the surface underneath it, which means I can come over to split and we'll just do a split unmasked points and we'll go to the new ones. I'm going to temporarily isolate. Uh, what's going on here, and I'm going to uh, do an auto groups. So it's going to be a little bit challenging perhaps to see because of the, the colors that it picked, but now I can basically isolate these shells. And I'm going to do a split hidden. So these little bolts I'm going to leave alone, but the shells are what I'm going to use for my Dynamesh operation with our, our circle here. So the circle is still an active Dynamesh. And I'm going to go ahead and set these to negative Boolean. We'll do a merge down. We'll hit OK. And recalculate. And you can see what it's doing is it's using those, those shells to punch out those forms in the sphere. And we're getting just a little bit of some crap around the edges. Another solution for this kind of thing is uh, here in the clay polish menu. So I'm just gonna leave all the settings to their default value. And you can see what happens when I run that. It's gonna clean that edge up. It's not perfect, but we come over here and there's uh, some soft and sharp values. So if I increase the soft a little bit, let's see, might smooth that out a bit. Um, another option always, of course, is to just increase your Dynamesh. And a thing that's really important and worth mentioning about a clay polish is what it's doing is basically just pinching edges together and it will mask the areas that it has modified, which is something that you need to be aware of because if you try to do a move or something, you can find yourself looking at something that looks like this, right? If you see that, that's just a big red flag that you have uh, some, some geo that is procedurally masked because of a clay polish operation. So you just have to unmask it. And there's an option here uh, that we can also take advantage of. I'm gonna go ahead and, and just recalculate the Dynamesh and you'll see it will preserve all of our uh, poly groups, but you can also come over into uh, the deformation tab and do a polish here by groups. And probably I need to increase my, my resolution. You can see that's getting kind of blurry, but um, just for the sake of this, uh, we're not going to go too crazy. And uh, in this case, it didn't really work that great, but whatever. Okay, so the point is, let me pull back a little bit, it looks fine. Uh, if I go ahead and turn on my bolts, now I have these really cool little inset features that look like they were machined in and like nice clean bolts and everything is just set up perfectly. So I, I will have a, a, a one of these videos. I'll show you how to set this stuff up. It's pretty straightforward once we cover some of the other basics. But anyway, so that is probably most of what I want to talk about with Dynamesh. There may be some other things and, and uh, as they occur to me, I will mention them.